What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So we've been seeing a lot of remasters and remakes recently, and many of them are very high quality. And now it looks like one that I didn't think we'd ever see is being hinted at now through leaks of a pu that publisher's website. And it gets even weirder when you realize that publisher is Konami. We're gonna discuss that one though here today. Also, we are going to be taking a look at day one in the hearing between Microsoft and the FTC with some wild stuff getting thrown around, including quotations of console wars. Oh, and E3. We know 2023 was canceled, but what's in store for the big showcase and event going forward? Well, based on a recent update, it's not looking too good. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Starfield as Todd Howard did make an appearance on Kind of Funny Games uh, Xcast podcast, talking about all kinds of different things in their newest title that's coming up here soon. Unfortunately, fishing is not in. But he did talk about some of the planets, which remember there are a thousand different planets apparently that you can explore and describe some of the things you may come across or even not come across. We can see this posted up. This was transcribed by Video Gamer, who when talking about the planet says, pushing it, about 10% of those planets have life on them. We're pushing it to the edge of what we, of what do people think, what planets are in that Goldilocks zone versus planets that have resources. Now, I, I guess if you consider the fact that there are obviously a lot of planets out there and would you expect every single one of them to have life on the planet when you're really just kind of venturing out into the vastness of space? Probably not. I guess the idea of 10% being some of those larger cities that we've already seen, especially in that big Starfield showcase. And he also mentioned that there'll be times where it feels like it's just desolate. You're alone on some of these planets and you're gathering resources and exploring things. I mean, think about caves that you'd be going into and finding all kinds of rare materials, but not necessarily dealing with uh, large animals or even just enemies that you would come across. It just gives you that sense of just quiet and alone while venturing through space. It seems like something we'll have to experience because when you hear 10%, doesn't sound like good news, but I guess we'll see when the game comes out in a few months. Also, we did get a bit of an update on the Metal Gear Solid collection. This though on the PC side and people started to notice on, notice on the Steam page that or it doesn't look like it has keyboard and mouse support. Th these are screenshots that were taken and posted up over on Twitter from Emmerich who says, no keyboard controls, it seems. And there are three different screenshots from the major titles, obviously in that collection, Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3. And that's pretty unfortunate. I mean, it, the, the keyboard and mouse will still work. It is technically you know, a third person shooter going the first person mode to shoot as well. Uh, it just seems odd that they would require you to use a controller. I still personally would rather use a controller for Metal Gear Solid because that's just what I've been using this whole time. I know there were PC versions of Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, but even that was a little sketchy just in the port job. And now I'm, I'm thinking of that, seeing no keyboard and mouse support here makes me worry a little bit about some of these ports for PC, but it's still nice to have all these games in one collection. And I guess we'll find out more as we get closer in October, specifically the quality of these ports. Oh, and here's something exciting to look forward to for QuakeCon, especially for Quake fans who really liked seeing that Quake remastered that was, that was unveiled a couple of years ago. We can see this posted up by Kamatsu who noticed that Quake 2 Remastered was rated in Korea. Now, remember, QuakeCon is coming up starting August 10th, and a couple of QuakeCons ago, Quake Remastered was unveiled, so it seems fitting that we would probably see Quake 2 Remastered shown off as the same, actually the same thing happened. The, the rating was spotted, I think the same ratings board and everything for Quake Remastered leading up to QuakeCon, and then it was unveiled, so yep, expect to see Quake 2. It, it does make me think that Maybe we'll see Quake 3 remastered because that was an awesome time online. Would love to see that in a couple of years. But Quake 2 was a great title as well. And we've seen what things like the ray tracing effects can do on it. And I am curious what they have in store here for the remaster. So exciting stuff. Look towards QuakeCon though for that one. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this remaster that appears to have been hinted at from leaks on the publisher's own website. And that publisher being Konami, 
means that this has to have be something to do with Metal Gear Solid, right? Well, take a look at this tweet posted up. This is from Nitroid, who says, The new Metal Gear Solid website added buttons to the timeline for the games in Master Collection Volume 1, but if you inspect the page, there are placeholder buttons for Metal Gear Solid 4, Peace Walker, and Metal Gear Solid 5 as well. Okay, so that, of course, leading people to believe that since this is Volume 1, which has the, the main titles that they're pointing at being 1, 2, and 3 for Metal Gear Solid, well, the next one would probably, Volume 2, have Metal Gear Solid 4, 5. They're talking about Peace Walker, but you could also bring in some other games like Acid, right? That was kind of a strange title from the PSP, but you package that in with the other three titles and you could have something pretty cool there, especially for fans of the, steri the series with a lot of nostalgia attached to it. But Metal Gear Solid 4 is the one that everyone's gonna take notice of if indeed this ends up being correct. I think it's the right way to go to have it, obviously, because right now it's stuck on the PS3 and I know you can emulate it, but it's not the greatest experience ever. There's still glitches and things to figure out. And a lot of it has to do with the emulator being worked on by just people through like way of a hobby and some small backing through a Patreon rather than have Konami show up and say, okay, let's get a bunch of people on this thing. Let's get this ported over to specific machines, which based on what they have here with volume one, I guess would be the PS5, Xbox series, PC and Nintendo Switch. Could you imagine having Metal Gear Solid Four on the Switch. That'd be that'd be an interesting timeline to live in. But I would love to see this happen. One, it'd be great to have Volume One and Two, and basically have the entirety, just about, of the Metal Gear series available to you on a platform. But two, Metal Gear Solid Four just needs to be experienced by more people. I just thought it was a really cool game to play through, and yeah, it definitely plays into the the fan service and the nostalgia. But that was kind of the idea as it was bringing closure to the entire series since technically five went back well before Metal Gear Solid 4. But it is interesting to see this story pop up after we had just talked about how it was revealed that Konami had Metal Gear Solid 4 running on the Xbox 360. So we kind of know it's possible that it's not all linked to the cell processor of that PS3 and all of a sudden Konami's becoming much more interested in releasing games on consoles, right? And PC and stuff. So getting away from that pachinko machine infatuation, maybe they really are like, okay, well, let's go ahead and get Metal Gear Solid 4 and start porting that over. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping because this will be something really cool to have revealed next year. And the fact that they already have some of this stuff on the website makes me think that they're maybe planning for that, especially on the build up to the big Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. So exciting stuff there. We'll see if we get any more little bits of information through way of reports or even Konami just apparently messing up and posting on their own website. Next up, let's talk about the hearing between the FTC and Microsoft with day one now in the books. I picked out some highlights because there was a lot of stuff getting thrown around in that courtroom, a lot of revelations being made as an example. Microsoft apparently changed their usual 70-30 split to 80-20 for Call of Duty, and basically Activision twisted their arm and said, what are you gonna do, not? give us this 80-20 split for Call of Duty, and Microsoft technically did. Uh, but we also learned some information around PlayStation strategy if Microsoft acquires Activision with their PlayStation 6 console, and even Indiana Jones coming up. Let's, let's start over here, though. This is from Steven Totillo on Twitter, saying PlayStation chief Jim Ryan said that if deal closes, Sony can't tell Activision about its next console. Which seems odd because Call of Duty is still going to be very, very big on the PlayStation platform. You feel like you would want Activision to have all the tools provided to them to create the next Call of Duty on the PlayStation 6 rather than have a lot of that info withheld from them until zero hour and then they have to try to throw together a port for the first year. I don't know. That one might... that. That might be a bluff from PlayStation. You can probably call that one. But then here was an interesting thing because it brought up console wars into a courtroom. Yes, that's right. It, it was actually said and submitted. This from Microsoft saying Xbox has lost the console wars and its rivals are positioned to continue to dominate, including by leveraging exclusive content. Xbox has consistently ranked third in consoles 
behind PlayStation and Nintendo. It is amazing that when the history books are written about this point in time and maybe kids in uh, school learn about it, we would have just been joking back and forth about console wars, but we actually would have been le learning about console wars there uh, in the classroom. Now, if we go over here, this with the FTC, Speaking about Starfield and Redfall exclusivity, they say defendants put great stock in Microsoft's concerns about infuriating gamers if it were to foreclose rivals' access to Activision content, but those same concerns did not stop the ZeniMax decision. That's right. The FTC is pushing heavily that Starfield was indeed going to be released on the PS5. In fact, there were, I mean, let's be real, there were probably working versions of Starfield on the PS5 very similar to Redfall. Microsoft comes in, and they shut it all down. Nope, we're not shipping Redfall, we're not shipping Starfield on the PS5. And Pete Hines was there and uh, gave his own uh, his own testimony on a lot of this stuff. And in fact, Indiana Jones came up and Pete Hines said that, yes, that title is going to be exclusive to the Xbox or Xbox Game Pass specifically uh, and PC. But... He also went on to say that they had originally drawn up a contract with Disney that would have included a multi-platform release, so the PlayStation 5, and when Microsoft came in, because remember, that was, according to them, months before the deal happened, they decided to go back and draw it up again, this time... Well, getting rid of that PS5 logo. Now this hearing will continue for four more days, I believe. So it's going to go all the way until next Wednesday. And this was just day one. I believe today, Phil Spencer will be taking the stand along with uh, some other higher ups at like Google and stuff. So we'll be getting more and more information. And it it's interesting to see some of the stuff trying to just get thrown out there because at times, it wasn't necessarily supposed to be put out there in the public. Apparently the 80-20 split was just kind of just thrown out there out of nowhere. And originally it was redacted or at least not mentioned. So you can, I guess, watch a lot of this stuff happen. I, I'm not necessarily as interested to sit there and watch court proceedings for hours, but hey, if you're curious about how it turns out in real time, go ahead and check it out there. And of course, I guess I'll keep you guys updated as we go along with this hearing because it's pretty important considering if the FTC ends up getting their preliminary injunction, Microsoft has essentially said, we're gonna move on then. So if the judge rules in favor of the FTC, that pretty much crushes the deal for Microsoft and Activision. But if they rule in favor of Microsoft, sounds like they're gonna be trying to close the deal like ASAP and then deal with the CMA outside of that after closing. So pivotal here for Microsoft and Activision. And I guess we'll see how this turns out over the next week or so. And if we get any more wild and interesting revelations coming out of it. Next up, let's talk about Super Mario Brothers Wonder, which is an awesome looking 2D Mario game. I'm excited to pick that one up in October, but there, there is something that's come up here with fans uh, of the Mario franchise that has them wondering if Nintendo has recast Charles Martinet for the voice of Mario and even Wario actually has come up. And there are tweets all over the place right now of recordings comparing this. For example, this is posted up by uh, by Jem who says, people are arguing on whether or not Charles Martinet is voicing Mario in Wonder. Not here to give my opinion, just bring up a bigger sample size. So if you're curious, check out some of these tweets. I'll have a, sor a link down in the sources and you can kind of hang out, listen and compare them for yourself. There's also one for Wario. And I was going through these and it sounds a little different, but not that much to where I'd immediately say, well, they got rid of Charles Martinet and they're going with someone else. Mostly because people, maybe people don't realize this, Nintendo has been reusing a lot of those same lines for a long time now. So it's not hard to believe that after like seven or eight years, they may have re-recorded some and Charles' voice just sounds a little different. It's very possible there, right? But hey, you never know. Maybe we beat Super Mario Brothers Wonder and the credits are rolling and you're seeing all the people who voice the different characters and then it gets to Mario and it says, Chris Pratt. And you go, well, I mean, he is really cool. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the future 
of E3 because we had an update that certainly isn't painting a great picture for the future of this industry showcase. And we can see the screenshot that was posted up over on Reset Era. And this is from the Los Angeles City Tourism Board of Commissioners. And they had a meeting essentially going over revenue and some of their future goals and plans. And at the bottom here, you can see a little asterisk that says includes E3 cancellations for 2024 and 2025. And yeah, they would probably know if the ESA is re-upping their deal since they, they typically obviously have it in LA at the LA Convention Center. And if the ESA is not doing that, well, they would remove the revenue they'd expect from that and have it in these reports. While the ESA did respond this through an update with VGC, who says the ESA is currently having conversations about E3 2024 and beyond and no final decisions about the event have been made at this time, which reminds me of kind of what they said last year. And well, there was no E3 in 2023, obviously. We had Summer Game Fest and a scatter shot of events happening throughout June, one of which is happening today with Sonic Central. So I would like to see E3 come back for just the idea of having everything more confined to like a week, just more concentrated and predictable. But... E3 is not going to work if they just try to do it the same thing again. And that's the hard part is figuring out what can E3 be right now in this current climate of social media and a lot of companies and publishers and developers ability to just click a button and go live and set up their own presentation that doesn't cost anywhere near the amount that it did to set up an entire spot on the showroom floor at E3. Now, the fact that they don't appear to have a setup in LA with the LA Convention Center and all this makes me think that if anything, they're shopping around to other locations. I, I've heard a couple, like New York's been floated. What, uh, I've seen Las Vegas come up. I think New York would be mayhem. I think Las Vegas would probably make more sense overall for what they're technically considering, but it won't matter where they go if they don't figure out what they can be in the first place to be successful and make sense for people to go out to. But I will say, It'd be a lot of fun to go to Vegas for E3, and I would like to go to E3 while it's still somewhat around. So if they come back, go to E3 for at least a year or two so I can go out there, say I went to E3, and then kind of move along from there. But who knows? At, at this rate, I feel like we're going to get to March of 2024, look around and be like, oh yeah, what's going on with E3? And then probably a few weeks later, find out it's been canceled. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, are you paying close attention to the Xbox Activision merger process? Okay, 57% say not really, unless some big news <laughs> drops about it. 31% say no, I'm just waiting for it to wrap up at this point. And 12% say yes, I'm following every bit of info that comes out. I saw some people in the comments say, well, yeah, I, I, I watched the show here, I am following it. Not really, I haven't been covering that much because I was just waiting for like big events to happen or serious news. There's just a lot of small things that have been coming out. But now that they've basically reached the end game here with this hearing that's more or less gonna decide if Microsoft is able to acquire Activision Blizzard, I'd say it's definitely worth covering now as long as this hearing is going on. And I guess that's what we're gonna be doing. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from SCJ Productions saying, it feels absurd to say, but I was a bit disappointed. When I first saw Final Fantasy 16 got an 88 on Metacritic as after the demo, I would have expected above a 90. I'm a few hours into the full game now that it's released and with my time played post prologue, that 88 score still feels too low as the game has blown me away. I, I see this still now, and I mean, our expectations have continued to rise. 88 is a good score for a video game on Metacritic. I mean, really, I, it used to be breaking into the 90s was very, very difficult to do, but it's been a really good year in video games. I mean, it just has. We've had several games that have broken clear into the 90s. So when you see a game like Final Fantasy 16 that in a vacuum at 88 is very good, you then realize, oh wow, that's probably not gonna be in the game of the year conversation because we're anticipating many more games to come out that might break into the 90s and at 88, it might not even be the top 10 for the best rated game on Metacritic's list, but that's just kind of where we are. It's been a really good year in games. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today was the potential of Konami 
actually remastering Metal Gear Solid 4. Let me know if you played it back in the day or if this happened would be the first time going through it. And then also, what about the hearing between the FTC and Microsoft? What do you think about some of the stuff flying around in that courtroom? And then the voice of Mario, does it actually sound different to you for Super Mario Brothers Wonder? Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here at Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.